President Biden facing some fresh backlash for his sanitized for his presidential political protection, as I put it, <laughs> visit to the border and thousands of illegal immigrants crossing into the United States, not any of whom he actually saw. I don't even know how that's possible. Construction work continues on a barrier surrounding his Delaware beach home. Oh, that's nice. Why? For increased security, of course. And it's going to cost taxpayers $500,000. Brian? Yeah, so I guess it will do work. Uh, so it's built around the side of his house. It's going to cost $500,000. I guess taxpayers are picking it up. It's a big white wall. Daily Mail picked it up, took a picture. And I think it's ironic where he continues to say walls don't work. He continues to push to try to get the shipping containers off the border, mm -hmm. makeshift barriers just to slow down would-be illegals, and at the same time puts on his house. But when it comes to the border, that's just a bad idea Look. that the Vikings came up with that we should have dropped it. <laughs> The Vikings, not the Minnesota, the Minnesota Vikings. Minnesota Vikings. No, no. But that's the Long as in the purple curtain. Sheepskin, that wasn't yeah. a wall. That was a <laughs> purple that's getting straight, yes. right? Okay. So who had the curtain? Uh, no, uh, the the iron that was steel, uh, Steelers. 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 I knew somebody had a curtain. Right. Curtain. It was uh, the same year though, the 1970s. Purple people. Purple. Year. I'm so Before lost. you were born. Ooh, I wish. Not even true. I don't even yeah. think NFL was around <laughs> when I was born. Uh, Emily. It, this also speaks to perhaps why the border czar doesn't feel the imminence or the urgency of disaster at the border. She, too, lives in a state with a wall. That's right. And you would think she would have been a participant or at least commented on, acknowledged Biden having his layover there in El Paso before he was on his way to the summit in Mexico City. Uh, frankly, it just is one more indication that this administration doesn't actually care. They had to have a sanitized view of El Paso. They botched the statistics, by the way, our president did with President Obrador of Mexico when he tried to talk about fentanyl. He's not even adequately or accurately briefed. He has been in a manufactured bubble for quite some time. Mm -hmm which includes a wall. And remember what he called Trump's wall. He called it oh. the physical embodiment of Trump's inability to develop effective immigration policy. And yet, wow. after he went down to El Paso, he used, the first image he used to tout that visit was a wall. So why is he making that, that synonym, that, that parallel between El Paso, the wall, which by the way, as we saw, the wall actually stops at El Paso, so you can look into Juarez Huge gap. quite easily, and you yeah. can see why there is an absolute lack of any type of barrier. That's why everyone down there, by the way, in Juarez and El Paso, they mm -hmm. just say it's a line. It's not a border. It's just a line. That's what we you say in Arizona. Right and we actually have a structure in Nogales. Here you go. Right? It's still, it's, uh, because the fentanyl is flowing, and, and our men and women are doing everything they can to try to stop it. Um, so, Carly, here's a question for you, because Governor Abbott opened my eyes to this yesterday. Part of the cleaned up optics were provided by Texas taxpayers. Yes. Because just a couple of weeks ago, he put those containers in place, and that helped stem the tide. Then the president wanted them removed. But in Arizona, notice, yeah. Yeah. So, so, but he waited until the, the tide had been stemmed a little bit. He goes down there, and then suddenly he can see, oh, you know, maybe, maybe a wall. Yeah. He did the same thing in Yuma, Arizona where the Democrat mayor there said that we're in trouble. Mm. Okay, well, here's a little money for building out some structure. I mean, this is a piecemeal and it is political. Yeah, exactly. It's a lot of uh, false optics and politicking happening right now. And speaking of the political element of this, uh, President Biden supported the Secure Fence Act when he was a senator in 2006, which appropriated money for 700 miles of border wall. He also voted in favor of, uh, no, he also supported jailing employers who hire illegal immigrants and said sanctuary cities should not be allowed to violate federal law. And he said a fence would need, was needed to stop drugs coming in from corrupt Mexico. Mm. So, 17 years ago, President Biden and former President Trump were the same person on this issue. Imagine that. And now, flash forward to today, he's in Mexico. He's talking to Lopez Obrador, and he really does have a, a good chance of possibly stemming the flow of drugs and fentanyl in this country. We had Derek Maltz on Vox and Friends first. Great guest, uh, former DA special operations director. He used to lead operations uh, targeting Mexican drug cartels. And he says, you can fix this issue, secure the border, uh, must push Mexico to shut down the chemical weapon production labs. And he also yeah. said, start demanding the extradition of kingpins back to the United States, like El Chapo's son. Well, yeah, they don't care about being in prison Paris. in Mexico. 
their big fear is being in prison in the United States. Declare them mm. as terrorists, which is what Governor Abbott wants to do. I think it's fascinating that you drew a picture for us of Biden back in the day. I don't even think that he would recognize that person. Exactly, now. yeah. Or maybe that person wouldn't recognize the guy today. Mm. Um, well, I right. think he wants to get back to that person. I, I think we're seeing him making moves right now because he sees the 2024 election coming up. I would also point out that we have spent billions and billions of dollars in this omnibus bill and in our defense budget to make sure that there are secure borders for Ukraine and for Israel uh, and around Joe Biden's house. Oh, but right. for some reason, this oh. one, this one is a problem for him. And he's walking along that wall, I think, for a reason, because I think he's going to start walking back this. Obviously, there's nothing that you can do. Position uh, yeah, obviously, there's nothing you can do except, except have a secure border. Maybe. That's right. Uh, Marsha Blackburn, uh, Tennessee senator, took a delegation of all women to the southern border. She actually uh, was in Eagle Pass, the Del Rio sector, which we know has had human catastrophe with young people, people of all ages drowning in the, the uh, Rio Grande trying to get here. She was on the Faulkner Focus last hour talking about the border crisis and brought up some interesting points. Watch. You look at the women and the children that are in these groups, it is heartbreaking. And what we do know is that the humanitarian crisis doesn't stay here on the southern border. Uh, the drugs, the human trafficking, the gangs, the sex trafficking, the crime in our cities, the drugs that are in our communities, it is causing a humanitarian crisis in our country. Martha. You know, uh, Marsha Blackburn's making a great point. The untold story, or the story that needs to have a lot more attention, I've thought for a long time, is the human trafficking situation. And there are people who are dedicating their entire lives in this country to stopping the human trafficking that's going yes. on down there. These young girls who are told, basically, if your family pays this amount of money, we'll get you a job in the United States. They get here, and they are being pimped, essentially. Mm -hmm. And they have no agency whatsoever. So I give her, uh, Senator Blackburn, a lot of credit and those folks. In, and also their trip pointed out exactly what the president didn't see. And it's not so tough to have your eyes open and say, let's go. No, you know, like we said yesterday, just drop me in there and don't yeah. tell anyone I'm coming because I want to really see what's that's going on. How, how many points it. would he win for right. that yeah. on all sides? But that's a commander a in chief and not dropping in to see his troops. Exactly. And that's not what we saw with Biden. Hey everyone, I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.